Hello everyone. Welcome back for the second part of this ICD-10 CM coding updates series. Thank you for joining today for this presentation on the latest ICD-10 CM updates for the financial year 2023. This is part two of the three part series and we will cover the updates in a chapter specific format which will make it easy for everyone to understand uh, the important updates for the year 2023. So this is the second part of the updates, and we will cover all the important updates from chapter 6 to chapter 13 of the ICD-10 CM code set. We will review the ch changes for the financial year 2023, including the addition of new codes, deletions, and updates in the guidelines and also any conventions uh, that have been changed or updated for uh, the financial year, year 2023. So in this previous session, we covered updates for categories of codes related to candidiasis of the vulva and vagina, infection associated hemolytic uremic syndrome, von Willebrand disease, non-immune heparin induced thrombocytopenia, short stature due to endocrine disorder, code updates related to dementia, and alcohol and drug usage codes. With over 20 years of experience in the US healthcare industry, I have been part of different projects and departments which include medical coding, medical billing, and client servicing essentially. I'm dual certified with a CCS certification from Ahima and a CPC certification from AAPC. I have also trained many professionals in medical coding, help, helping them in uh, gaining knowledge and also getting their certifications completed. I'm Vinay Kumar and I come from a, a background of medical coding, transcription and medical billing. So, the Centers for Disease Control has issued the 2023 ICD-10 CM updates which includes a total of 1176 new codes, 28 revised codes, and around 287 deleted codes. These 2023 ICD-10 CM codes are uh, used for inpatient discharges occurring from October 1st through September 30 of 2023. And these are also used for patient encounters occurring from October 1st, 2022 through September 2023 for outpatient encounters. So this year, the focus is primarily on these categories of codes, including dementia, endometriosis, maternal care for fetal disorders, head injuries, certain types, and social determinants of health. These are the primary uh, code sets or categories where there are significant changes. Otherwise, there are many other categories of codes where there are minor updates as well. We will talk about all these in detail in the following slides. We will also look at the changes by each chapter of the ICD-10 CM and I will try and cover all important updates throughout this presentation. So the first set of codes that have an update in chapter 6 are for limb girdle muscular dystrophy. This condition represents a large group of genetic diseases in which there is muscular weakness and muscle wasting, which is otherwise called as muscular dystrophy. Limb girdle muscular dystrophy includes at least 33 different inherited diseases and there are 16 known genetic forms of this condition. These muscle related disorders first affect the muscles around the shoulder girdle and also the hips. So, so limb girdle Muscular dystrophy now has 10 new codes that include descriptions for different types of dysfunctions and these are examples of newly added ICD-10 CM codes for this condition. G71.031, G71.0341, G71.035, G71.038 and G71.039. These codes include dominant uh, limb girdle dystrophy or limb girdle dystrophy due to alpha uh, sarcoglycan dysfunction, uh, dystrophy due to anatomin 5 dysfunction or other specified and unspecified muscular dystrophies. One additional code that is updated in chapter 6 is for 
postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is otherwise also referred as POTS, P-O-T-S. Now, POTS historically did not have its own unique code in ICD-10 CM. It was listed as a synonym under the code I-49.8, which is for other specified cardiac arrhythmias, along with, uh, you know, many numerous other medical conditions like Brugada syndrome or re-entrant atrioventricular tachycardia or ectopic rhythm disorders and other arrhythmias. So this was classified as part of other medical conditions related to arrhythmias. Now, this is why a new code G90.A has been introduced for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. This is a new code specifically for POTS. Now, the next chapter and another important chapter that received updates for the financial year 2023 is chapter 9, Diseases of the Circulatory System. The first update in this chapter is for codes related to refractory angina pectoris. Refractory angina is a chronic angina that does not respond to medical or other uh, interventional therapy generally. So, nine codes have been added to this chapter that are specific to refractory angina pectoris. Note that all of these codes are classified as CC conditions and may affect the DRG selection. So you have to be careful when selecting these codes since they are uh, you know, identified as comorbidities and complications which will directly affect the uh, DRG values. Now code I20.2 is refractory angina pectoris while the other eight codes are specific to the atherosclerosis codes of coronary arteries depending on whether it is a native coronary artery or whether it is a bypassed graft with refractory angina pectoris. So you have code I25.112 for the native coronary artery, I25.702 for atherosclerosis of coronary artery bypass graft which is unspecified, I25.712 is for atherosclerosis of autologous vein coronary uh, artery bypass graft, then I25.722 is autologous artery coronary artery bypass graft. So this way these codes identify the angina pectoris, refractory angina pectoris, depending on the uh, vessel, whether it was bypassed or a native coronary artery. Second update for the circulatory system is for pericardial effusion. This condition has two new codes now. One is for malignant pericardial effusion, code I31.31. And the other code is I31.39 for other specified pericardial effusion. Third set of uh, codes updated for this chapter, the circulatory system, are for non-rheumatic mitral valve disorders. Now, code I34.81 is for non-rheumatic mitral valve annulus calcification. And code I34.89 is for other non-rheumatic mitral valve disorders. These are two codes for the non-rheumatic mitral valve uh, calcifications. So, these two uh, code sets again received updates for chapter 9. Now, apart from this, the other three uh, code sets which we spoke about, chapter 9 also includes updates for codes related to aortic dissection and aortic aneurysms. For the financial year 2023, ICD-10-CM includes codes for various sites of aortic dissection and aneurysm which differentiate with, uh, which actually differentiate with and without rupture from code category I-71. There are 26 new ICD-10-CM codes that will enable better capture of clinical presentation and more utility for the physicians. So, the new codes. Now, the new codes are now available for dissections of the ascending aorta, the aortic arch and the descending aorta. Also, for Aneurysms, okay, if you, if you look at the ascending aorta, the dissection of ascending aorta is I-71.010. For the aortic arch, it's I-71.011. For the descending thoracic aorta, it's I-71.012. And unspecified thoracic aorta dissection is I-71.019. This is for the dissection of the aorta. Also for the aneurysms of the abdominal aorta, 
Further granularity, granularity is now accurately uh, reflected in the code selection, like the location of the aneurysm, uh, such as whether it is pararenal, juxtarenal, and infrarenal. That's for the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Codes for aneurysms of the thoraca abdominal aorta uh, are also expanded to create specific codes for whether it is supraceliac and paravisceral uh, aneurysms. So you have four different categories or six different categories for thoracic and abdom uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms that received updates. All these codes specify whether it is with rupture, without rupture as well. The next chapter, for chapter 10, diseases of the respiratory system, there is only one code uh, changed, which is J95.87 for transfusion associated dyspnea, TAD. Review the tabular list for this code carefully, since there is an excludes one note at this code for transfusion associated circulatory overload, which is coded with E87.71 and also transfusion related acute lung injury, which would be coded to J95.87. 84. So remember, th these are excludes one notes and you cannot code J95.87 when these two doc uh, conditions have been documented. The next chapter, diseases of the digestive system. One code updated for chapter 11, diseases of the digestive system for hepatic encephalopathy. Code K76.82, hepatic encephalopathy involves altered con consciousness and behavior uh, related to insufficient liver function. So this condition is the loss of brain function that occurs when the liver is actually unable to remove toxins from the blood. Specifically, ammonia. Ammonia is one of the toxins that is normally made uh, harmless by your liver. Okay, But when ammonia or other toxic substances build up in the body, and when the uh, liver is not working well, it may affect your brain and cause, it, uh, cause this condition hepatic encephalopathy. Okay, so the instruction in the tabular list for this code K76.82 instructs the coders to code also the underlying disease. This is what you will need to remember and look for when you are going to the tabular list. Okay, so you need to code for the underlying disease such as hepatic failure, whether it is with coma or without coma and whether the hepatic failure is actually acute, chronic, or alcoholic, or post-procedural. So follow the instructions in the, in the tabular list carefully for coding the hepatic encephalopathy. The next chapter that received significant updates again is the musculoskeletal system and connective tissue, chapter 13. New codes in category M51, thoracic, thoracolumbar, and lumbosacral intervertebral disc disorders. These codes describe intravertebral annulus fibrosis defects. The annulus actually is the tough outer ring of cartilage that surrounds the intervertebral disc, and then it surrounds the nucleus pulposus. Okay, and the annulus fibers prevent the nucleus pulposus from herniating or leaking out of the disc. Basically, they avoid any sort of leaking from the disc material. Now, if the physicians assess, treat or close annular defects, they will now have a way of describing exactly what diagnosis they are actually addressing. The six new ICD-10 CM codes specify the site and the size of the defect. As an example, code M51.8A5. This is for intervertebral annulus fibrosis defect in the large lumbosacral region. This would be utilized to capture a large fibrosis defect of the lumbosacral spine. The ICD-10 CM tabular also specifies code first if applicable any disc herniation. So you might want to look for the documentation for disc herniation and code first if that is applicable. This is for lumbar and lumbosacral annulus fibrosis disc defects. Five codes overall. Again, the next set of codes from this chapter, the diseases of musculoskeletal system and connective tissue. These are for muscle wasting and atrophy. This condition now has 
four coats and these coats describe the different locations of the atrophy such as cervical, thoracic, lumbosacral and unspecified levels. The next condition which received updates in the musculoskeletal system and connective tissue uh, chapter is slipped upper femoral epiphysis. 29 ICD-10 CM codes were revised and added to reflect acute and acute and chronic slips which reflect whether the hip is stable or unstable. Slipped upper femoral epiphysis is also otherwise known as slipped capital femoral epiphysis or SCFE. Okay, in this condition, the growth plate is actually damaged and the head of the femur slips off the neck at the growth plate. This condition usually develops during periods of rapid growth around the onset of puberty. For financial year 2023, ICD-10-CM has codes that classify this order based on the onset such as acute versus acute and chronic and the laterality is also specified such as whether it is on the right side, left side or whether it is bilateral. And also the stability such as whether it is unstable versus unspecified sta stability is also identified in these codes. This is for slipped upper femoral epiphysis. Now, the last set of codes from this chapter that were updated are for rib fractures during cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR. Fractures of the ribs during CPR is fairly common and about 30% of patients usually suffer a fracture or break during CPR. There are now five new codes ranging from M96.A1 to M96.A9 for the year 2023. These codes capture fracture of the ribs, the sternum and the thorax due to chest compression and CPR. So M96.A1 is for fracture of the sternum associated with the CPR. M96.A2 is for fracture of one rib due to the CPR. M96.A3 is for fracture of ribs, again associated with chest compression and uh, CPR. M96.A4 is flail chest associated with chest compression. And other fracture is M96.A9. These are for fractures of the ribs during CPR. I have listed the links where you can find the comprehensive list of ICD-10 CM files for the financial year 2023. You will find the updated guidelines, complete list of codes along with the descriptions and also other relevant data in these links. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and support the channel so I can make a lot more videos that would be helpful for all the coders whether you are an experienced coder or a beginner. I will also cover the rest of the chapters in the third and last part of this video series. Please comment and let me know if you like the content and the presentation and if you have any further questions on the updates you can comment on the video and ask me. Thank you.